What's going on, Summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and I'm excited to be your host for our latest Korean Builds video. As a reminder, the series covers the latest builds from everywhere, but we do try and place emphasis on the Korean solo queue servers. We're going to be covering builds for every role, so make sure you stay tuned for yours. Subscribe so you don't miss on future content like this, and let's get started. Our very first build is for Morgana Top. We're seeing her picked more often as an answer to the abundance of tanks like Maokai or Orn and crowd control present in the meta. Morgana has resurfaced as a powerful top laner, and as a result, she's not only a great counter pick, but also a great asset to nearly any team composition. She's a top laner that's nearly impossible to kill due to her spell shield as well, allowing her to easily escape the majority of jungle ganks. With her insane wave clear, she's often pushing tanks under their turret, and then proceeding to either slowly chip away at the turret health, or instead just poking down enemies. In the later stages of the game, you'll have full AP Morgana rather than support Morgana, acting as a mix of a midline disruptor or even an explosive frontliner that can absolutely crush enemy teams and choke points. I'm personally a huge fan of this pick. She's a great mix of team player and carry that anybody can fall back on as a pocket pick. One final note is that she's also difficult to dive as her wave clear allows her to basically never get pushed under turret. For her runes, take Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Presence of Mind, Coup de Grace, Double Adaptive Force, and a defensive rune of choice. Her items are Leandri's Anguish, Sorcerer's Shoes, Archangel Staff, Zanya's Hourglass, Rapidon's Death Cap, and Void Staff. This build provides a ton of damage as well as some safety via Zanya's Hourglass. Next on the list is Jace. Given that his buffs have helped make him a bit tankier than before, it's only appropriate that a new build taking advantage of this has been developed. This build provides him with a ton of sustain and also allows him to take on meta tanks head to head. For runes, take Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Divine Sunderer, Defensive Boots, Man Immune, Death Stance, Mob Mamordius, and Guardian Angel. With Divine Sunderer and Death Stance, you're ready to jump headfirst into fights. That being said, you'll still deal some insane damage with a combination of Conqueror as well as a plenty of AD from items like Man Immune. Before moving forward, I just want to make a quick shout out to our coaches at ProGads.com who are constantly helping players achieve their ranked goals. Make sure to contact one of them if you're interested in improving, mastering a champion of choice, or learning new strategies to help you climb. That covers the top lane build, so as a recap, we'll put them on the screen for you all to see. Take note of those, and let's head to the jungle next. In the jungle, Blitzcrank has taken Summoner's Rift by storm. As if his oppressive performance in the bottom lane wasn't enough, Riot has added a ton of changes that have made him a viable jungle as well. This may seem like a strange build, but he's received plenty of changes that make it work. The main ones being added AD ratios as well as stronger Ws for jungle clears. For his runes, take Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight, Double Adaptive Force, and Armor. You can follow this up with the following items. Titanic Hydra, Defensive Boots, Blade of the Rune King, Rift Maker, Death Stance, and Force of Nature. This is a bruiser build that allows you to act as a frontliner for your team, but also dish out enough damage to solo kill an enemy if you pick them off with a well-placed Q. Another jungler gaining popularity is Rammus. Following some big mobility buffs, we're beginning to see more players go for heavier damage builds that also implements healing. By building Rhythmaker, you're able to get the most out of your defensive stats since you can heal through fights, significantly increasing your effective health. For runes, take Aftershock, Font of Life, Conditioning, Unflinching, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Attack Speed, and Double Armor. His items are Thornmail, Sorcerer's Shoes, Rhythmaker, Force of Nature, Frozen Heart, and Gargoyle Stone Plate. Don't underestimate the damage that you can deal with this build. You're not only tanky, but an absolute menace out on Summoner's Rift that can kill basically any carry who's unfortunate enough to get hit by your CC chain. A ton of Korean players have been incorporating a Rift Maker into their builds for that extra healing and the incredibly valuable stat line it grants. That covers the jungle, so we'll throw up the builds on the screen again. Write them down or save them for reference and give them a try in your normal games and see how they feel. Before jumping into the mid lane though, we also have a top jungle combo to go over. This incredible duo is epitome of CC Chain, there is no top laner capable of surviving this gank, Diver winning a 2v2 with his jungler against this duo. The only trouble they have is a Morgana in the opposing team or a Mordekaiser that can take them into the realm. Now for the combo, we're featuring Maokai top with Skarner jungle. This duo's CC Chain is basically unbeatable. No top laner is able to survive a gank, let alone a dive. Their 2v2 potential is impressive as they can easily focus a single target with their CC. Maokai brings a decent amount of burst damage while Skarner's damage over the course of the fight is surprisingly high given how durable both of these champions are. Aside from an enemy Morgana or Mordekaiser like mentioned earlier, who can isolate fights into a 1v1, this duo can wreak havoc on basically any top lane opponent. If they give the duo too much respect, the CC train can make its way elsewhere and basically ruin the laning phase for a poor victim in the mid or bottom. For Maokai's runes, take Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Second Wind, Unflinching, Presence of Mind, Last Stand, Adaptive Force, Armor, and a second defensive rune of choice. His items are Sunfire Aegis, Defensive Boots, Thornmail, Demonic Embrace, Force of Nature, and Gargoyle Stoneplate. 
200's runes are Conqueror, Triumph, Legend of Alacrity, Last Stand, Magical Footwork, Cosmic Insight, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. His items are Divine Sunderer, Defensive Boots, Man Immune, Thorn Mail, Force of Nature, and Death Stance. Before moving forward, let me ask you a question of the day. What are your thoughts on the meta in the moment? Do you like it or hate it or have mixed feelings? I, for the most part, kind of like it. There's a decent amount of variety, but the issue right now is that it feels like the strongest picks are just way better than their competition in the role. With champion-specific nerfs, I feel like it could be an acceptable, diverse place. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And let's head into the mid lane. In the mid lane, we'll begin with a new build for Kassadin that is reminiscent of past builds that basically made him broken. This is a prominent build in Korea right now, especially against AD comps, since Kassadin can safely scale into the late game and take complete control over the pace. For runes, Run Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Mana Flow Band, Gathering Storm, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Frostfire Gauntlet, Sorcerer's Shoes, Mana Mune, Demonic Embrace, Rabbit on Zeth Cap, and Frozen Heart. Frostfire Gauntlet and Frozen Heart makes him nearly unkillable, as there is basically no one that's able to kill him before falling victim into his insane damage output. Next in the mid lane is a build for Irelia. It's a small adaptation that makes her much harder to deal with in the mid lane, so let me give you a rundown of that build. For her runes, take Press the Attack, Presence of Mind, Legend of Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Second Wind, Unflinging, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Mid lane is full of less durable opponents, notably mages. Taking Press the Attack allows you to access quick burst damage in place of Conqueror, which is better suited for extended brawls. Most mid laners won't be able to survive Aurelius' innate damage, Press the Attack, and Ignite to top it all off. For the items, build Blade of the Rune King, Defensive Boots, Wits, and Frostfire Gauntlet, Death Stance, and Maul of Amortius. By the end of this build, Irelia is tanky enough to dive straight into the backline, but still deal insane damage with a combination of Blade of the Rune King and Wits End. Frostfire Gauntlet and Blade also makes it easier for her to get onto the targets, where she can just auto-attack away at the health bars. That's it for the mid lane build, so let's take a look again at the screen for a recap of those builds. Hopefully you've got them down, because we're running through the bottom lane next. As tanks have been establishing their presence in the meta, we're also seeing the return of Kogma. Practically designed to shred through them, he's able to shine because of the threat of burst damage on the enemy team being slightly lower than before. Instead, with good positioning and Enchanter by his side, he can safely but surely cut his way through tankier enemies with ease. That being said, he also has an alternative itemization where he builds Frostfire Gauntlet in case the enemy team has plenty of assassins that he needs to deal with. As a result, he's a little bit more versatile than you'd expect. That being said, let's run through the builds beginning with the items. Take Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, Cut Down, Shield Bash, Conditioning, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Since Kogma is typically accompanied by an Enchanter, taking Shield Bash can prove quite valuable, but in the rare case that you don't have one, you can replace the Rune. For items, build Blade of the Rune King, Berserker's Greaves, Ginsu's Rage Blade, Rift Maker, Wit's End, and Titanic Hydra. In regards to that Frostfire itemization I mentioned earlier, it's the exact same build but you replace Rift Maker. The extra defensive stats can help you out a ton against assassins, while the slow it provides will grant you a solid boost in your DPS. Especially when ahead, it can prove to be just as impressive, if not more. For supports, we're seeing players pick up Nasus. He did receive some buffs that boosted his popularity as a top laner, and support Nasus turns out to be a pretty solid flex pick. While you won't be able to pick up nearly as many Q stacks, the high poke damage from his E is a great tool in the bot lane, while his buff W provides an amazing amount of utility at all stages of the game. Nothing feels worse than getting withered by a Nasus in a late game team fight and being unable to do anything about it. For his runes, take Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Presence of Mind, Coup de Grasse, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Arcane Comet and Scorch add some extra sync to his poke, making him an even more troublesome target to lane against. For items, build Frozen Heart, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Locket of Iron Solari, Rally's Crystal Scepter, Watchful Wardstone, and Demonic Embrace. That covers the bottom lane builds, so we'll throw them up on the screen again as a recap. Make sure you take a final look at them as we're about to wrap up the video. Thank you guys so much for watching Korean Builds for Patch 12.20, and like always, let us know what you guys thought about it in the comments down below, and if you have any feedback for us. If you'd like, you can also check out the description for a link to join our Discord community, where you can be the first to learn about any future events or giveaways that we host. Anyway, with all that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.